Yeah. Father, we just ask for your presence over this set and this uh, service. Just help us to be uh, instruments in your hands. That your will be done. With this message and this music. Just purify each heart. Help us to turn our eyes to you. I always want to be the poster mom, but I know that that's never going to happen. <laughs> Ooh, I really struggle with trying to be perfect. I see so many moms that look like they're doing it the right way, and I've always dealt with perfectionism in my life, and so being a mom has multiplied it. There are some days where I feel like I'm not as compassionate as I feel like I should be. Um, there's other times where I feel like I am I feel like I just can't handle being a mom sometimes. And it's, there's days where it's just too heavy. Life just around me just feels too heavy. Uh, I struggle a lot. I struggle with patience. I struggle with time. When you have two, it's harder than the first time. So having mom guilt with not having enough of one or the other. I struggle a lot with enjoying all the phases of motherhood and it took me a, a while to really discover it, it was a huge effort for me to find what I enjoyed about being a mother and finding, finding that it really was my job and my calling to raise these three little babies and um, yeah that's that's been a hard one just enjoying motherhood. Her hugs, they're just the best, I guess. He makes me pancakes for breakfast today. Probably my favorite thing to do with her is um, play games with her and play games. Usually we cuddle together or um, color. She gets me to the fun and she's never frustrated about it. She forgives me quickly and she uh, likes having girl time with me and she just likes hanging out and stuff. She buys me clothes and a house and food and other stuff. She's always there for me. I miss her when she's gone. Because I just know that she loves me so much and like, because she is, spends time with me loves me and she's the best and beautiful. It's hard to describe because she does so many things but it's like mixed into one. But when like we're baking, she um, is like just happy and I like it when she's happy and it makes me feel loved. Mom, I love you like so, 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 so much. Like, my mom to the moon and back 5,000 times. <laughs> Amen and happy Mother's Day to you mothers who are here today. And you know mothers can have and bear children, they can adopt children, and they can be disciples. Amen. A lot of women will end up being a mother to people that they never knew before and sharing their faith. Why don't y'all stand up? We're going to worship the Lord today. I don't know if you noticed in that video that it was through the eyes of children that we saw the truth. So many times we beat ourselves up, but it is God's grace alone that enables us to walk this walk and run this race. Amen? So if you want to put your hands together, we're going to do this is amazing grace. Sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and 
morning. Welcome. We are glad you are here. Whether you are here via the live stream or here in person, it is great to gather and worship together once again on a rainy Sunday. Uh, happy Mother's Day. We know that for some this is a joyous time of celebration and for other people this might be a hard day. So wherever you find yourself uh, on that scale, on that spectrum, we are glad that you are here. We are glad you are here in community and worship together. I want to take a moment and invite you to fill out your connection card and slip. Uh, there's a spot on there too to say if you are a first-time visitor. So do we have anybody in worship for the very first time? 
If so, and you don't mind raising your hand, where Usher, Pete, would love to bring you a little welcome gift. We are glad that you are here. I'm Pastor Lauren, Pastor Randy, you'll hear from in a little while. I have a couple of announcements, updates in the life of the church to share with you. First, uh, while you're filling out your slip, sharing with us your prayer requests, any joys and concerns you may have, also want to invite you, if you have anyone in your family, uh, connected with your family who's graduating from high school, who you'd like us to recognize and celebrate when we recognize our graduates next week, I'd encourage you to check that box, let us know, so we can be prepared to celebrate with you and with your family. I'd like to invite you after the worship service to head downstairs to the Flame Cafe, Get a cup of coffee and some snacks, and there are lots and lots of things actually going on at the Flame Cafe down there today. So first, I want to encourage you once again to sign up for a slot to get your picture taken for our photo directory. Marion and the team told me that this service is very underrepresented, so please go downstairs, sign up. We want as many people as possible to have their pictures taken and be a part of that. Also happening down in the fellowship hall, we have our youth who are having a bake sale to raise money for student life camp. So buy some baked goods. Um, and our Relay for Life team is selling luminaries to continue to raise money and support Relay for Life. So I invite you to go downstairs after the service to the fellowship hall and participate in all of those activities. Also want to let you know that we are gearing up for Vacation Bible School. It's coming soon. So there are lots and lots of ways that you can help, but some tangible ways right now would be to visit one of our big display boards in the narthex or downstairs and take a little card, bring some supplies, uh, whatever is listed on the card. We are also in need of lots and lots of people to help decorate and help teach and lead. So those are a couple of different ways you can help get involved with Vacation Bible School, and we would love to have you. Finally, my last announcement is we are still... Uh, accepting kids to register for our summer camp program put on by the preschool staff. So there's more information for that in your bulletin um, and on our website. We would love to have your kids come and be a part of our summer camp program this summer. So having heard all of those announcements, friends, I invite you to stand back up and greet those people who are around you this morning. <laughs> Morning. Good. How are you? Good morning. Awesome. How are you? Good to see you. Are you going to do the camp stuff this summer? I'll pull out the reference thing yes. for you. Yes. Yes. I got the job. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I actually, I actually got offered this. I actually got offered this. Nope. That's going to be good for you. Thank you. be seated now. We're going to hear a testimony today. She's our church treasurer and representative as trustee. And trust me, she is a woman of prayer. And many times we've looked at Lois and said, Lois, you've got to pray for us right now, okay? So uh, let's welcome Lois to share her testimony on Mother's Day. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise 
You know, uh, I want to wish you all mothers a happy Mother's Day. All you beautiful mothers that are out there, God bless you. You know, our focus today is Timothy's faith was influenced by his grandmother and his mother. And it's just like Timothy, I was influenced by my mother and grandmother. My mother, her name was Carolyn Elizabeth, and my grandmother, I called her Mama Pearl. And these two strong women, they were constant encouragement to live, for me to live by faith and fight the good fight. I come from a family that everyone had different denominations. My grandfather was a Presbyterian minister. My father was a Baptist. My mother was a Catholic. And of course, my grandmother, she was a Methodist. Can you imagine being raised in a house with a Catholic and a Baptist? <laughs> that is why, with my strong background, that I do not give up on anything or anyone. I will never do that. My dad told me one day that I should read the Bible. And he gave me this gift. Two, two gifts. He gave me my first Bible and also he gave me a Kodak camera. He said to use them well, which I did. And this introduced me to the Word of God. And it changed my life. It changed my thoughts. It changed my words. It changed my deeds. It changed my actions. It changed me from the inside out. My God gave me a family, an immediate family, a church family, as well as the body of Christ. He, gave, he has blessed me. He has given me miracles. My miracle is, stand, is sitting right there. Emerald, stand up so everyone can see my miracle. <laughs> the enemy always tried to, for interference. But you know, I remember that we have a mind of Christ, which means we outsmart the enemy. The enemy is not that smart. The enemy is quite dumb. That is why when we pray, we can pray. It goes up to the throne of God. God hears our prayers and comes down the answer. Pull down those strongholds. That is why my prayer life has totally changed. I pray in a way that I do not ignore broken relationships. I pray not to get human praise. I pray so I won't be long-winded. I love to talk so I cannot be long-winded because you repeat words are meaningless. And I don't pray only for myself. I pray for you, I pray for every need that is needed, and then I put myself on the back burner. You know, the Lord has taught me, he has taught his disciples how to pray, but he taught me something special. He taught me to pray to our Father because he has been a father to me just like he's a father to you. He, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in the Spirit. We have been blessed by the Holy Spirit. So pray in the Spirit, meaning no distractions. We are totally focused on the Lord. Pray continually. Pray with confidence. And in devotion and alertments, I always give thanks. Sometimes I pray without using words. As I said, it's kind of difficult not to talk at times, but you know, we need to be silent. Just our presence, just being in someone's midst, just giving someone a hug, that's prayer. And each time we pray, our prayers are answered, whether we see it, in our, we see it ourselves, but somebody else sees it. God has blessed me, and then when I talk, I talk and I pray to the Heavenly Father, and I talk and ask God as if I'm talking to you. There's no way of being sort of like, there's a, a protocol, no. We just talk to God 
as naturally as we talk to each other. God is always with me, which makes it himself, God, the Father, and me. That becomes two. I, as we celebrate our Savior, let's pause to look at him through the eyes of faith, because that's what keep me going. I meet so many people that have passed my path, and I walk through life, and I ask God, what can I do for that person? What can I do for those individuals? All I can do is pray for you. And I will always keep going. I will always do the walk in life for you, for God, as well as for you. We do and we will be able to lift our voice in praise to God. I leave you, my, one of my favorites, I leave you with this. It's uh, Ecclesiastic chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and there's no one to help them. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone, though one may be overpowered? Two can defend themselves. One of my favorites, Hebrews 13, verse 6 through 8. This is what keeps me going. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God bless each and every one of you. And mothers out there, I have something my daughter gave me in 2000. And it's called A Wonderful Mother. Thank you, Mother. I'd like to give, share this with all the mothers, the grandmothers, and the mothers-to-be. Thank you for your sacrifices you have made for me. Thank you for all you've given me and for all you've done for me. I know there have been times that had it not been for your unselfishness, my life would have been different, not as balanced, not as happy. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for your example. Thank you for being my mother, my grandmother, my mother-to-be. You're included in this. I wouldn't trade you ever. If I could, I love you so much. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> scripture she referenced in 1 Timothy 1.5 says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I'm just thinking about that word sincere faith. You see, we passed on our faith not by religion, but when our faith is sincere, with all our lives we commit ourselves to Christ and run the race well. That's faith that lives on to the next generation. And then, greater in the Lord.
that as we try to parent so often we can get lost in the mire and we can try to think that we have to be perfect but God is just calling those as I read earlier to be sincere just to come before him and ask the Holy Spirit to enable you amen this morning we got some a little one here who's never played drums here for our church <laughs> I think he's doing a good job call him out there you know, if we will ask God to enable us, you know, if we will just put ourselves out there and say, use me, God, he will use us. Amen. Nothing can compare your living heart, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free. And my shame is under your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. By your presence, Lord. Nothing can compare your living heart, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen 
all the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the attentive may we apply the words that are spoken today God for your glory alone work in hearts today Holy Spirit move within each one here today I pray in Jesus name probably don't like when we steal your moment for a second, but okay. um, I'm going to steal it because this is the last Sunday that oh. I'm going to be able to read scripture for you. <laughs> so I love you. Dawn. I love you. Thank you for everything. And um, this is Lily's last Sunday with us. Lily oh. goes back to Germany next week. So um, today's kind of a special Sunday. Yeah, we need to let Lily know how glad we've been that she's been with us for the year. Okay, so today's reading is from 2 Timothy, um, chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is, in you, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, for the Spirit of, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And from 2 Timothy chapter 4, 6 to 8, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, 
and not only to me, but also to all you who have longed for his appearing. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Glorious Father, thank you so much for this man who serves you so well. Thank you for his guidance, his mentorship, his leadership, and for his friendship. Father, as we listen to the message that you have given him this morning, open our hearts. Let us take it in so that we can go forth and shine your light on the world. We ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dawn. You may be seated. Every time Dawn gets up here and reads scripture for me, I think about my Korean pastor friends because they always take their shoes off before they get into the pulpit to preach. And Dawn always comes and reads scripture with no shoes on. So I always think of my Korean pastor friends. Well, good morning. On this Mother's Day, I'm reminded of the sacrifice of my grandmother Orndorff and the sacrifice she made to raise me when my parents divorced. She'd actually already raised three of her own in a fairly dysfunctional household. My growing up was a little bit different because my grandfather Orndorff died at 42 and my aunt, uncle, and dad, they had already all married very young, 17, 18, and 19, and moved out of the house. My grandmother taught me how to be frugal, but also generous. If a person is in deep debt, it becomes difficult to be generous. Getting and staying out of debt uh, can lead to living a more generous life, and you don't have to work long hours or multiple jobs just to survive. I was also reminded that sometimes uh, uh, living life can pull you down and get you in debt in so many other ways with how you live your life, not just financially, and you get so low that you can't really uh, live a generous life as well that you might want to live. But God knows that. We were financially poor by all standards. Uh, in fact, yes, I was uh, one of those kids when it was 10 degrees out that had to go out to the outhouse in the morning uh, before heading off to school. But we always seemed to have enough, and my grandmother enjoyed uh, raising her garden and giving her produce away to others. Now I learned to work hard, tell the truth, learn lessons when I was disciplined, when I said bad words, or when I was mean-spirited, or when I got caught stealing one day. I shared with the eight o'clock service, I said, word of advice, don't get caught stealing. And Pastor Lauren looked at me and said, no, Pastor Andy, just don't steal, period. <laughs> right. And somehow my grandmother balanced discipline and grace. And you know, that, that's really an art to be able to balance both of those things. I knew she loved me and maybe some of the things she learned in raising her first three, she now had an opportunity to do differently in raising me. That's just how life rolls. We can always learn from our failures and do better next time. She lost her fourth child at two or three days old. So maybe for some reason, God placed me in that role uh, with her in her life. What she did best was to make sure I went to church every Sunday and to learn God's word in Sunday school. And so I could learn about faith in God. And oh, it's not that I always wanted to get up and go to church every Sunday. I mean, sometimes she kind of had to prod me along with that a little bit, push me along with that a little bit, but I'm really glad she did. Like Timothy, I was blessed to have a grandmother who had a sincere faith and love for God in her church that got me started off on the right foot and going in the right direction. Can you think of somebody maybe in your life that helped do that for you? Now my mother would remarry and she actually started attending a First Assembly of God church in Winchester, which was actually in stark contrast to her Church of Christ days when she grew up. I mean, very different type uh, congregations. And that became a smaller part of my faith experience, but a part nonetheless. My mother and I still talk about God, faith, and church life on a regular basis. She listens well, and she continues to be supportive, and I am sure uh, worries about me and prays for us often. And no, she is not happy about our moving to the big city, <laughs> but she understands, and she knows God has to have a plan for all of us. Paul saw how Eunice's and Lois's faith lived in his young mentee, Timothy. Paul wanted to encourage him to fan into flame the gift that Timothy's mother and grandmother had already been nurturing in their son and in their grandson. 
Now, I don't know who's been praying for you or who has prayed for you in the past, who has nurtured you in faith, or maybe they are nurturing you now in faith, who encouraged or is encouraging you to get up and get to church and attend worship in Sunday school, to get involved in a life of faith or to fan and to flame the gift that they see God has already placed within you. But I imagine and I surely hope we all have someone or someones that are doing that for us who are influencing us and thank God I hope most of us do. I know that's what the motivation is for our college-age young adult ministries. You see some of our college graduates and students on the screen up there. Because, you see, it's not just about signing and sending cards, which you all do. It's not just about having a Christmas party or a college road trip with goodie bags before exams. It's about building and growing relationships. Relationships of love and faith and connection at a time when many in this age group, 18 to 23, so easily lose connection with God and church life and faith. There is intentionality behind why people are called to share in this ministry. The same is true for your youth encouragement sponsor program. Yes, and there's a scene from last Sunday evening's banquet downstairs in the fellowship hall. It's not just about praying for our youth, though that's an important part of it, sending notes of encouragement or small gifts. More deeply, it's about letting our youth know someone cares for them, somebody's thinking about them, hoping their relationship with Jesus is being nurtured and fanned into flame, that their being part of this church family matters. God did not give us a spirit of timidity which is a lack of courage or confidence. Rather, God has given us, like Paul saw in Timothy, a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Some versions of the Bible say sound mind, so that's why we added that there. We are each to be using the spiritual gifts and living into the call God has placed on our lives to be serving God, serving God in the church and in our homes, in our community, as well as in our work life wherever we are, and this not as separate entities, but living our faith and calling out in congruence. What do I mean by that? We should be the same person on Monday at the office or in the classroom as we are when we're sitting in church on Sunday morning. That's how we will run our race of faith well. Now, I understand some of you have run this race of faith longer than others. But hopefully, we are all still on the track and not just setting up in the bleachers. It's easy to want to sit in the bleachers and just watch and cheer for someone else, isn't it? And from a physical perspective, maybe it is easy for you to run, or maybe the old feet and knees hurt so badly now that it would be impossible for you to even think about running a literal race. But this race Paul speaks of in Timothy is indeed a spiritual race. Is it a sprint? It is a mile? Maybe a marathon? How about a steeplechase? You know, when we think about how we keep fighting the good fight of faith, we obviously are going to need a lot of love, care, support, and accountability to keep us on the track and moving us forward. Why? Because life is not going to offer us a smooth highway. V dot builds a road. It's slick and it's smooth. If you want to see what that looks like, go over by Buffalo Wild Wings. They just resurfaced and redid that whole little section of the road there. The lines are easy to see so that you don't veer off the road and you know when and when not to pass. Our tires run smoothly on that road. They hum going down the highway. Then seasons come and go. And what happens to the lines? you know they fade. What happens to the road with the hot and the cold and the rainy and the snowy weather? Cracks and crumbling and worst of all, potholes. VDOT has to send workers and materials to repair and mend and in many cases resurface or rebuild the road. The old is gone. All things are made new. Life is just like that. The race of faith is just like that. Now let's go back to the steeplechase. 
The steeplechase is named after the horse steeple chase. And the race for humans, the longest is 3,000 meters. It consists of 28 to 35 barriers, hurdles, if you will. Seven water jumps, which I happen to love when they do those water jumps, and seven laps. And no, it's not the highlight of the Olympics. It's not like the 4 by 100 team relay or the 100 meter dash. It's a challenging and grueling race, and it takes resilience on part of the athletes, and it takes lots and lots of training. This sounds more like what a race of faith would look like. The difference is these runners know what's coming their way around the track, what they're going to be facing on each lap. As we run the race of faith, we might speculate, but we never know what's going to be over that next hill or around that bend. Highways get closed because of floodwaters, landslides, and sinkholes, but they do get marked closed, so you know that danger is imminent. In the race of faith, we don't know what all the obstacles goals are going to be. We just keep running the race. Think about it. Paul faced all types of trials, tribulations, and persecutions. He knew what it was to have plenty. He knew what it was to have little. He was hard pressed on every side, but he was not crushed. He was perplexed, but not driven to despair. He was struck down, but he was not destroyed. And if he did trip and fall down face first on the track, bruised, scraped up, humiliated. He found a way to get back up and finish the race and keep the faith. And friends, that in no way, shape, or form is easy to do, is it? But how did he do it? How did he keep the faith that he was instilling in his spiritual son, Timothy? How did Paul not lose heart as so many of us tend to do? You know, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, Paul speaks about not being disqualified from this race. How might we be disqualified? Maybe because of living in sin, you know, not doing the things that are pleasing to God. You know, it's lots of easy ways to get disqualified. In fact, what in the horse race just a couple weeks ago for the first time in history, because a horse went out a lane three too far, that horse got disqualified from winning the race, you know, trying to do it all itself. You know, we, we can't do this race by ourselves, Lois said. We have to have each other. You know, I think it's uh, like the lady in the Boston Marathon we heard about. I heard a friend tell me this this morning, how the race started. She got on a bus, rode all the way around the city, got off the bus just before the finish line and finished the Boston Marathon. You think she got the prize that day? She probably got disqualified. You know, there's no shortcuts, right? Running the race is going to be a challenge sometimes. Paul, like Timothy, was taught the faith. He understood his Jewish heritage very well, but he would testify that Jesus also taught him by revelation. And through that revelation, Paul preached to the Gentiles. Paul said he lived by faith and not by sight. He said it is Christ's love that compels us to do the same. That we are not to live for ourselves, but for him who died for us and was raised again. And he speaks of being temperate in all things. And that he has to discipline himself. We are going to have to discipline ourselves to run the race of faith. The way we face our giants, the hurdles, the water obstacles, the potholes of life, however you want to put it, is by preparing ourselves now for that which lies ahead. That is how Paul pressed on in the midst of his adversity, his heartache, and his conflict. And my guess is every one of us here has had some adversity to faith face. We've had some heartache in life, and we've had some conflict to have to deal with. Even when in his last days, Paul was actually under house arrest in Rome. He was blessed to have people who cared for him just as he cared for others. People who prayed for him just as he prayed for others. He spent time with Jesus who helped him up and perfected his faith and his convictions. He also knew the final outcome of running the race well and finishing the course, that there was actually a prize at the end, and that this was not only true for him, but for all who longed for and looked for the appearing of Christ. And you know, honestly, in the Methodist church, uh, getting that prize at the end is not something we talk a lot about, but I want to just share with you some thoughts about that. The prize is not a participation trophy or a championship ring or a medal of honor. 
It's actually a crown of righteousness. And now I really have no idea if this is an actual crown or simply symbolic, but I do know this. A crown is not a hat, but it's headwear that often represents power, legitimacy, victory, honor, and glory. Now, to me, I think this crown Paul speaks of could mean these things. He's run the race. He's finished the course. And he speaks in his letters of us having victory in Jesus, right? And how God raises the humble to places of honor. I also think the crown Paul speaks of gets linked with eternal life and resurrection life. Paul knew whatever he faced, God would give him strength and courage to keep fighting the good fight of faith to the very end. And he would one day cross that finish line and step into his heavenly home. And friends, those who believe in the grace and love of Jesus Christ and the work that he's done on the cross for us, that's a finish line we'll all have the opportunity to cross one day. And this is what he hoped for Timothy too. He knew it was not because of his own righteousness or any of his good works. Rather, it was a gift of God because it is by God's grace that we are saved by faith. And it becomes a combination of God giving us grace and gifts and then us fanning into flame those gifts with courage and confidence. And then running the race that God has for us over the hurdles, over the hills, through the potholes and the water obstacles. And all the while keeping our eyes focused on the goal of the upward call of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Thank goodness God gives us mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers and aunts and uncles and spouses and kids and church family and friends, teachers and coaches, you add to that list as you like. People filled with faith and courage who have in many cases already experienced some of life's hard knocks along the way. That they can come alongside us to at times pick and lift us up so that we do not have to run this race alone. Recently, I was part of a 5K run with Living the Dream to Remember Ben Long and to help raise funds and awareness for suicide prevention, drug abuse, and fighting depression. I didn't go out to win the race, friends. I really didn't. Uh, I was going to leave that to younger legs. I did bump into a person I knew, actually, who shared that she was about to go into a six-month treatment program And you know that day we ran the race together all the way around Yale Meadow Park. I listened as she shared her challenges and her struggles and how she wants to get better. I know why God had me run that race that day and trust me, God always has something for us to learn through that as well. We ran the race for Ben and others, but we also shared the faith and hopefully kept the faith all the way around Yale Meadow Park that day. But most importantly, We are keeping the faith in our hearts and through our witness every day of our lives. We did finish the race that day and it felt pretty good, uh, even though it was a struggle there at the end. But you know, a month later, she called me from the rehab center and she told me she was doing really well. She has grandbabies, you know, and she wants to be able to have a good life with them. She needed $100 for her monthly living fees at the rehab facility in Charlottesville. $100 was sent to her from your gifts from Bucket Sisters so she can keep running her race of faith. I'm praying for her on this Mother's Day, and you can too. My prayer is that each of us will keep on growing in faith. Fanning into flame each day the gift that God has given us, all the while with our eye on the goal of finishing the race well. And by God's grace, you can and I can, and church family, we can. Let us pray together. Oh, life sustaining God, we want to thank you that on this Mother's Day, We have scriptural examples of women who have nurtured faith in their children. And we are grateful we have living examples that have also nurtured faith in us as well. 
for all who have nurtured, encouraged us in our faith, we say thank you, God. In the days ahead, help us think about the race we've been on thus far in life and to keep training ourselves along with others for what we cannot yet see, but what life tells us is coming. And to prepare for those unforeseen obstacles, like a pothole in the night that would serve to wreck us. And even if we do get wrecked and scraped and bruised, help us to know that you are a healing and hope-filled present God. God, take our old and make it new. Lord, this morning we do take a moment to lift up to you some family and friends of our church. We lift up to you Christine Watson and Cheryl Mulholland and Mike Moore. Lord, as they go through tests and procedures, just bring healing to their lives. We pray for Pastor Norma Jean and her healing and Betty James and her transitioning to Roanoke. God, we're grateful that Robert Main is here with us today. We've been praying for him for many Sundays now. And God, we just pray that you touch his heart and heal him, Lord, in your special way. God, we lift up to you Susie Krebs, who we found out this morning is now off her dialysis. God, that's no small miracle either. Lord, all of our military folks that are away from family for Mother's Day, for Brant Crandall and Patrick Dotson, for Wyatt Fedick and Jonathan Miller, For Hunter Mills and Austin Neville and Noah Seeley, be with these young men, Lord. God, we continue to lift up to you Tevin Cheney, who has surgery this week to remove his tumor. We ask God that you guide the doctors in that precise work that they'll do. And Lord, be with Marcel Gonzalez, one of our faithful members, as he has two more treatments this week. God, we're grateful that Lynn Garver is back with us from her Emmaus walk. And just pray, Lord, that you have blessed her in all ways. And Lord, uh, we ask that you be with folks like Stephanie Fellows, who's uh, off to a trip in Ireland for uh, 10 days, and Kelly Hyde, who is off uh, to an internship in South Africa, and Lexi Bates, who's headed out to St. Jude's for an internship. Bless these young people in their summers that they have. And Lord, we're grateful for the new arrival of Houston Otto Worsler. We pray for his grandparents, Lord, and this little baby born to Ryan and Abigail. And ask, Lord, that your special touch would be upon this little one's life. God, thank you for hearing our prayers today. And now as we move to the special moment, Lord, to share in baptism, we just thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and hope that you give us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's in his name we pray and all God's people said, amen. We'd like to ask Carissa and Ryan if uh, they would come forward along with their family and Grayson and Emerson is uh, we prepare for this time of baptism today on this Mother's Day. And you can follow along on the screen as they come. And if there's others that might like to come and share uh, from our congregation to stand uh, with them, you are welcome to do so. I do have to share with you, Carissa and I had the privilege of a number of years ago, uh, if you don't recall, uh, being on a mission trip in Chile and working with John Elmore, one of our covenant missionaries. And that was always a special time I'll remember sharing with her. And then to get to watch her and Ryan grow their family together here in Culpeper. Uh, God's blessings on you guys. So brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, through the sacrament of baptism, we're incorporating God's mighty acts of salvation. We're given new birth through water and the spirit. And all this is God's gift offered to us without price. So it is with joy that we present Emerson, Elise, Miranda for baptism today. And mom and dad present their daughter. On behalf of the whole church, I want to ask Carissa and Ryan Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? She's all right. (laughs) She is so looking forward to her baptism. (laughs) Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all nations and races. And finally, will you nurture Emerson and Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Now, do you as Christ's body of the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Emerson now before you in your care? 
With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Emerson with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Now, Ryan, what name have you given to your daughter? Emerson, Elise, Miranda. Hi, Emerson. That's Pastor Lauren right there. Look at Pastor Lauren. Yeah, it's much happier. (laughs) Emerson, this water that we use today is a gift for you. It's the water of baptism, and it reminds us how much Jesus loves you. We know that Jesus came to John the Baptist by the Jordan River, and that he asked John to baptize him, and he did so in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus came out of the water, a, a dove fell upon his head, and there was a voice from heaven that said, this is my son whom I love. And you know what? Today, God loves you too, and he is so glad that you're gonna be baptized. So God bless you, and God bless this gift of water, and most importantly, Emerson Elise that now receives us. So Emerson Elise, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Y'all want to sing with me? Come on, let's go sing. Oh, Grayson, are you doing okay over there? Okay, you know we did this with you one day too when you were little. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And Pastor Lauren's going to offer up a prayer for Emerson. Am I going to finish? Oh, I don't know. (laughs) Go ahead, finish. Can I do that first? (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. So, members of the household of God, we commend Emerson to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and to perfect her in love. We give thanks thanks for for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members members together with you in the body of Christ in this this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Would you like to pray for Emerson now? (laughs) Absolutely. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for Emerson, for her family. God, we thank you for all the ways that you've already worked in her life and in their life. God, I pray that you would continue to be with her as she grows and be with all who will be caring for her and teaching her. God, we pray that you would especially be with their family today in this time of celebration. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, let's let uh, Emerson and the Miranda family know how glad we are for them on this Mother's Day. (laughs) Sure, I could. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Congratulations. A bunch of stuff for you. Bless you. Hi, Grayson. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. It's a great day to celebrate in the Lord's house and what an awesome blessing it is to experience uh, that uh, uh, baptism on Mother's Day. What a great gift. Friends, we uh, do a lot of of work for God in this church. God has has called each and every one of us uh, into into mission and um, you guys are responding to that call. Um, You know, we have uh, covenant relationships 
with, uh, with churches out of this country. We're doing work overseas. We're doing mission work right here uh, in, in Culpeper in the U.S., uh, whether it's feeding people with uh, ministries like Mana, whether it's uh, uh, going on a Vim trip and uh, cleaning up and, and helping to restore somebody's uh, personal things and, and personal life. Um, I know so many of you are answering that call into mission, and uh, we, we have another way that you can uh, get into mission right here in this church coming up in just a few weeks uh, with our Vacation Bible School. Um, I know that uh, there, it's, it's such a blessing if you've never had an opportunity to uh, participate. Uh, I have um, been blessed to be able to, to do that and just to uh, share Jesus and to be there um, with uh, all these kids and um, it's just a, an amazing experience if you never had the opportunity. So um, whether you, you can help out in so many ways, whether it's something behind the scenes, whether it's just being uh, with these children for the course of the week, um, whether it's, you know, cleaning up or, or uh, so many ways. Anyways, uh, Betsy still needs help. Uh, so if you feel like you're being called into uh, support uh, this mission in that way, uh, please see the church website. Uh, there are tons of opportunities where you can just click, enter your information, uh, pick a job. If you have questions about it, reach out to, to Betsy uh, or any one of the pastors here. So, uh, ushers, come forward. So, I, I heard my brother David lead us in a great big roar last week. So, I think that's pretty fitting. So, uh, since we're getting ready to continue our worship by the giving of our tithes and our, and our offerings, let's just give a great big roar. Ready? One, two, three. Roar! <laughs> awesome. Okay, would you pray with me? <laughs> First it was a lion, now it's a lamb. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for uh, bringing your message. Father, thank you so much for uh, putting uh, mothers in our lives, whether they're a biological mother, an adopted mother, a spiritual mother, a mother figure. Father, you bless us uh, so much uh, with, uh, with the women in our lives, women that you have, um, you have put in our lives for a reason, um, women you've called to, to serve, and we're so blessed. Father, pray that you would just continue to um, just continue to, to call us and, and uh, bless us, and uh, Father, we would just uh, respond uh, in uh, what you, you made us to do, Father. Pray that we would just serve you with all of our hearts, that we would just shine your light, that we just live our lives uh, and love others, that um, it would just be a testament of our faith, and uh, that we serve a risen, a risen king. Uh, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You understand we're going to worship the Lord now? In Christ alone will we finish the race well. Amen.
study God's word together and not get kind of close. Um, the person said, Pastor Andy, for some reason I heard God say to me, you're running the wrong race. And I think, wow, ah, she's that tuned in. And you be able to hear from God like that. What race are you running today? What's your race of faith look like? Even on this Mother's Day, we are God's Running. This grace of God wants 